Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Bellzone podcast, your go-to podcast for all things coating and engineering. I'm Richard Bywater and in today's episode we are going to be discussing SF6 uh, and the problems associated with SF6 leaks within the electrical industry or electrical equipment at that. Uh, So to do this, I'm going to be joined by a couple of special guests. Um, But before we get on to the main part of the podcast, I'd just like to remind you all that uh, with our latest batch of episodes, we are uh, encouraging our listeners to get a little bit more involved. Um, So we've set up a brand new email address uh, because, of course, we want to hear from you guys, the the Bellzone podcast listeners. Uh, So please email your questions, thoughts, even reviews uh, to podcast at bellzona.com and uh, and yeah we look forward to uh, to hearing your thoughts so without further ado uh, let's get on with the today's episode Th- thanks very much for uh, for agreeing to be a part of, uh, of of the episode i think the best way to kind of start would be for you to um, just introduce yourself uh, and introduce uh, a bit about the the role that you do here at bellzona right so for those of you who don't know, my name's Adam Wood. I'm a technical service engineer here at Belzona currently. So part of my role is, as we said earlier, uh, that we've got the training aspect, but we've also got the engineering and project aspect. So uh, if we've got any new product ideas coming in, it, originally it'll be my I will be tasked over to engineering to see if there's any feasibility behind it and see if uh, there's any potential areas to uh, investigate for. Bell's owner solutions. Okay. So you, you sit very much on the, the technical side of things currently. Yeah, currently, yeah. Um, and, uh, and like you just said, you're working on a lot of the the kind of new emerging yeah, so, applications and markets for, for so, Bell's So a lot of new, so very uh, renewable focus at the moment. And okay. obviously, though not renewable, SF6 does fall alongside yeah. that kind of category. Okay. At the moment, so yeah, that's one of the reasons why we've been investigating that also. Fantastic, great. So um, SF six obviously is is what we're here to to talk about today. So, um, what is SF six? So SF six, sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur hexafluoride. So it's a gas. It's a gas. Yeah, it's a gas at room temperature. Okay. So uh, what's it used for? So the main use of it is in power generation. So it's used as an arc, arc quenching media. Okay. So basically it stops high voltage lines arcing over to the casing and going okay. boom. Right, okay. So it's in, in extremely high voltage yeah, so equipment it, and it's to stop the arc going in between. Yeah, between the casing, between the line and the casing. Right, okay. So, yeah, that's the, that's the key purpose it's used for. Okay, sounds great. What are the problems associated with it? So there's one major problem, right. and that's just how bad it is for the environment. It's, okay. uh, well, it's 23,900 times worse than carbon dioxide as, right. a, as a okay. pollutant. So, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty bad for the environment. Pretty harmful. So that, is, harmful that is, of course, if it leaks. Yeah, that's if it's leaked. If it's, if it's controlled and stored properly, then it's absolutely fine. Okay. But if you've got a bit of a leak then it's not so good. So in, in a scenario where it does leak, that is where the kind of real issues who's begin. Not only for the environment, but by the sounds of it... But for also... the companies as well, yeah. Okay, so what what goes wrong uh, if, if a company is found to have a, a, even a small amount? So uh, you can actually get pretty big fines for allowing SF6 leaks. So you've got to have really good management and uh, maintenance strategies to deal with your SF6 equipment. Okay. So that's especially prevalent for lo- for like large power network operators. Okay. So they'll have asset records of all their transformer equipment and all their high voltage and medium voltage switch gear, which contains yeah. SF6, and they'll regularly inspect those pieces of equipment to ensure they're not leaking. Okay. And and that is because if, if they are found to be leaking... Going to get a nice fine. Fines are... It's not a night... Well... well it's it's a, it's a nice for the person giving the fine. It's not nice for the person receiving them. Very very high. And is it dependent on the just the volume of? Yeah, it can be dependent on a load of stuff. So it's on the volume of material leaked, the okay. size of the company. Because obviously, 
if it's a large large company then okay. they're going to find more yeah. than a smaller company will oh, so it's, it's kind of like proportional yeah, yeah it's yeah, proportional yeah, yeah. yeah okay so you mentioned the kind of uh, again not off piece here but how, how do you measure a gas that's already escaped so obviously these pieces of equipment are normally sealed pieces of equipment yes or they regularly they can have uh, gas changes now okay. so obviously if you're evacuating a transformer for SF6 okay and you're pulling it out and you've only got, well, you've pulled it out and you've only got, let's say, 50 kilos, yeah. but you know you put 60 in. Right, then, okay. Then that you know that's where your leakage is. So you know you've got leakage there. So that's one way. It's heavily recorded in terms of the amount that goes in and then yeah. that's yeah. how they test that's, it. That's anything. obviously a very exaggerated figure. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Serves a very good purpose in terms yeah. of, uh, of, of explaining. Yeah, what. you can also get uh, le- gas leaks uh, de- uh, detecting equipment, right, like okay. sniffers, basically, yeah. which you can put around and that's it and it will detect any traces of SF6 coming out. Great. Which are the well, very, very sensitive yeah. pieces of machines which are quite good. Well, they're good for detecting SF6. You mentioned electrical equipment. Yeah. In terms of industries, then this is something that you know SF six is visible or, or used in in you know wide range of industries. I'm guessing. Then. Yeah. So SF six will be used in industries, but solely for power trans- transformer equipment and voltage equipment, high, okay. high and medium voltage equipment. So it's not used as a gas in other industrial industrial processes. Yeah. It's just the electric. Okay. Side, well, especially in Europe, in Africa, anywhere with like a, a transformer or you know, yeah. the, uh, using SF six as, as this as arc, arc quenching in, me, arc quenching media, yeah, arc quenching media is uh, you know it's quite common common practice. Yeah, so you've got high if you've got high voltage going yeah. into a place, and there's probably something with SF six in it somewhere. Has this always been an issue then with the use of this gas? Uh, well. They never used to know how bad it was, but okay. it's, <laughs> so it's, it's always more... been, it's more prevalent, as, as we're trying to cut down our carbon emissions elsewhere, right, okay. due to like the Paris Agreement and such, like, as, a, as we drive towards a carbon neutral society, Yeah, it's going to be, it's one, of the, it's one of those things which they've clamped down on, as they've clamped down on other F gases, as, it, as a lot of a lot of people out there will know, yeah. they clamp down on it as F gases on as use in refrigerators. If I can get it, get okay. the words out. Yeah, yeah. As a, as a refrigerant, even. Okay, so so as as there's a bit more of a spotlight on uh, carbon emissions uh, and, and and polluting kind of gases and, and emissions, uh, a gas that's used in industry, which is. 24,000 times more yeah, polluting you, than carbon you, dioxide. I think you can round it up. It's close yeah, enough. Yeah, 24. Uh, it, it's quite a hot topic to, to make sure that that is not escaping in, into the environment. Yeah, you, okay. you don't want it escaping to the environment now. So what what regulations uh, are kind of controlling this to, to make sure that, you know, this this gas is not getting out in, into Yeah, so, so obviously uh, regulations differ by region. Yeah. But in our region, you've got EU directives which state the, uh, well, state what's, depending on the size of equipment, what maintenance procedures you need to go and undergo and how to report it and, and okay. whatnot, and the other stuff associated with that. Okay. And there used to be, uh, again... This is kind of, uh, I'm sure there's regional differences here, but um, typically you used to be able to get government subsidies to, to replace equipment like this yeah. if, you know, found faulty. and found Yeah, especially here in the UK, you used to be able to get government subsidies. I believe it was to cover half the cost of a new piece of equipment. Right, okay. Which is obviously quite a big, quite a big amount of money. Yeah. Uh, but they've moved away from that now, and it's they cover half the cost of the repair of that piece of equipment. Right. Okay. Which is one of the ways they're trying to uh, target that tra- target and achieve their sustainability goal. Yeah. Because obviously, repairing a piece of equipment is a lot more sustainable than well, chucking it out and getting a new one. Yes, a hundred percent. In fact, I was at a conference a couple of months ago where I heard that. Um, Steel industry it contributes nine percent to all global emissions. Yes, yeah, it does. Yeah, there you go. I thought, actually you yeah. were in that. You yeah you, yeah you, you, yeah I was in that. So, yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's very much something that that we're hearing is is the move away from the replacing of equipment and a lot more of a focus on on repair, and that's really where kind of Bellzona enters 
the SF6 conversation, if you like. Yeah. Because we are starting to, I say starting, I'm, I'm sure. We, we have been for a number of years. Yeah. There's been several, well, more than several, a lot of applications done over the years to SF6 yeah. containing equipment with the aim to stop any leaks occurring. Yeah, fantastic. Adam, look, thank you very much uh, for, for taking us through the, the basics of, uh, of, of SF6 and, and the problems associated. Um, thanks for your time. I hope yeah. you'll come on the podcast again. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, first off, Philip, thank you very much for agreeing to to kind of uh, have a chat with us today and, and take us through your experiences. I think the um, the the best place to start is if you could just introduce yourself uh, and introduce the, the the type of work you're doing over in Ireland um, for for Belzona and how long you've been affiliated with with Belzona. Okay. Um, I started in '96. Um, and at the time, my father was the distributor for okay. Belzona. So I worked for him for, oh, I suppose about um, eight years. Um, and he retired. And um, I was lucky to be given the opportunity to become the distributor myself. Excellent. And it's gone from there. Long, long time ago now. <laughs> long time ago. Great. Yeah. How how long is it? You say it was well ninety six. So what's that? Uh, that's twenty five years. Why wow. twenty five years? Yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah, I can imagine you've seen quite a lot in uh, in those times in terms of yeah. market development and yeah yeah things have changed a lot. Yeah, that's great. Right. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so um, so tell us a bit about kind of Bell Tech and, and the work that that you do then. Okay, so we. Essentially work, I suppose, we're the distributor for Belzona and our, yeah. our primary focus is on selling Belzona materials. But I, I discovered, I suppose, five or six years into doing this job that I was continuously coming up against the issue of, well, who's going to put it on yeah. um, regularly? And um, so I suppose the, the ultimate, it didn't happen immediately, but the ultimate solution was that we employed our own people to yeah. put Belzona on. Um, now, you know, we are very happy to sell as much Belzona as possible directly to the customers, and we obviously do that, um, but yeah. it's a smaller, uh, you know, percentage of our business than the business that comes in through contracting. Yeah. So we've, I suppose, for, I don't know, the last 15 years or more, uh, employed our own people, and uh, those people are, are have a reasonably high level of expertise yeah. in Belzona materials. So we know that, you know, um, when we're dealing with a customer, uh, we can, you know, if we say we're going to do something, we're in a position to do it. We're not relying on, you know, subcontractors or yeah. other people who may not have the same interests as us. And it, we find it works quite well and um, brings its own problems, yeah. obviously. Um, but I think in the round, it was the, the route to market that uh, was it was really necessary for us to do that, and I I, I don't really see that changing anytime soon. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so you so you you don't offer just the just the products, but also the uh, capabilities of of the application as well, and, and yeah. all the services that go along with that. Exactly, it's a full turnkey service. So um, yeah, we go for the, the full package. Great. Okay. Um, what we're really interested in today is hearing about your experiences. Uh, working and, and repairing um, the electrical equipment, particularly yeah. uh, the kind of leak ceiling for, for, for SF6. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's something that we, it became, I think, a major issue um, in the last, I don't know, eight or 10 years, maybe something like that, um, with, you know, an increased focus on, um, you know, global warming and, 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 and whatnot, apparently. You know, prior to that, you know, going back to maybe the the nineties or earlier, no one cared if FF if 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 SF six was leaking from switchgear. They just topped it up and away they went. Yeah. Um. But it 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 certainly came into focus um quite sharply with the the uh, network and um, the the electricity network operator here. Maybe yeah. I don't know eight ten years ago something like that, and we you know we had a relationship 
with them. Um, you know, we we you know maybe seldom you know some twenty three eleven or seldom some some you know eleven eleven or whatever yes. it was back then, and we were asked to have a look at uh, a fairly large bit of switchgear which they'd had you know quite serious problems with leakage even back then I think it was borderline acceptable because SF six isn't cheap either, yeah. uh, I think that was more their concern back then, <laughs> um, so it was really. Uh, I wouldn't say we 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 uh, you know we didn't have any sort of um, previous good experience to go off, um, and we were you know reasonably honest with the customer, and we carried out quite a few uh, repairs uh, using um, twenty two eleven. I think originally on this, and uh, it was pretty successful. It wasn't a hundred percent successful, but it, it was. Uh, it certainly uh, reduced the problem very substantially, and I suppose it it just kind of grew from there. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what what types of industries were you you, you kind of seeing these pop up in? It's the 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 network distributor, the elect electricity dis distribution, um, okay. uh, in this country. It's sort of state semi state owned so yeah. in in that sense it's quite easy to you know you know, branch out from one particular area to another it's run on a yeah. sort of a regional basis and um, you, you you know you can take a reference from a guy in the southwest and you know go to the guy in the southeast and say hey have you spoken to your colleague you know in the southwest you know yeah. this is what we're doing for him so that was kind of helpful for us um it's and they are the they are the only people who have this type of gear that I'm yeah. aware of, and um, these these big um, switch gear yeah. um, stations. Yeah, it is, it is interesting because we um, I know from from the kind of head office point of view here we're seeing it bob up in uh, you know stuff like the the wind industry for example. Yeah, uh, and, and you know, um, kind of all over. Obviously. It requires mm. these, these electrical bits of equipment. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's a problem that kind of spans over uh, many, yeah. many different yeah. industries. Yeah, I think it's kind of, we're fairly unique in yeah. Europe in that the network is owned by the state or yeah. semi-state run by a state-owned company. Um, so I think with the, the transfer, well, certainly with the wind farms, I think once it goes beyond a certain transformer, um, it then it's it then into the network. Um, okay. But lots of transformers too. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, so could you just take us through uh, a, a type of, uh, the application process for this? So why is your customer interested in using Belzona for, for this type of repair? Um, it's, I suppose it's based on our track record at this stage more than, more than anything else. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think there are probably other alternatives out there, but they maybe don't have the relationship that we have okay. with the customer. Um, and again, a, a pretty positive track record. It's not always a hundred percent perfect when you're dealing yeah. with leaks. It's 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 not always a hundred percent perfect. But you know, we would be considered at this point to have quite a good level of expertise with stopping these leaks. Yeah. And we we'd use various techniques depending on exactly you know what the arrangement was that we were looking at or where the leak was. I mean, yeah. the, the, there's a few different ways that we go about doing it depending on, on on exactly what the problem is. Okay, great. So just just for the listeners, um, uh, yeah, in terms of the, the how a, a repair or, you know, a standard mm. repair would look, I know we've spoken about kind of 11.11 and 23.11 yeah. there. Could you just explain yeah. the kind of basics behind it and, and why okay. you'd use... Uh, a yeah. base grade, uh, or yeah. you know, a couple of different systems to yeah. to repair yeah. the stuff. Yeah. Okay, we we found um, when you use um, twenty two eleven on its own or a, a two thousand series product on its own, yeah. uh, it, it it is successful and can be very successful. We did see um, a case where the pressure from the FF six had created a sort of a tennis ball sized sort of belly. In the in the in the twenty two eleven, I haven't failed. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> it was 20, strong enough. Yeah, the twenty two eleven being our, our, one of our last demo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so we decided that it would probably be wise to use a, a one thousand series, you know, okay. metal hard rigid based product first, yeah. and then go over the top of it with a two thousand series product. And um, 
that's really not based on anything more scientific than the fact that we saw a tennis ball sized bubble <laughs> <laughs> in the 2211. Um, I mean, there's various techniques. I mean, certainly when you have some of these flange faces, um, we all often found that the best thing to do is to overplate the actual joint in the flange, the flat surface uh, where you have the two flanges doing, we, we would overplate that by bonding on a piece of metal, uh, you know, the width of the two flanges together with a 1000 series product and then putting caps prefabricated, either metal or plastic caps over each of the bolt heads because with these things, you stop at one place, it comes out somewhere else and um, always. And it's really important to do the, the, the entire area yeah. So um, it's it's uh, something that we learned the hard way, I suppose. Yeah. You know, and um, and from the kind of uh, the the practical side of it, we've yeah. heard uh, from from uh, an earlier interview that uh, kind of conducted uh, with my colleague Adam, who, who went over the basics. That there yeah. are some quite hefty fines attached to yeah. uh, to you know the, the oh, leakage so. of this. Yes. From a practical from your practical experience, this is you know you've seen this in. in Absolutely. I mean, that's really focused uh, the 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 operators to ensure there are very very few, if any, leaks, and that even small leaks are now prioritised. Yeah. Um, there's really hefty fines from the environmental agencies um, yeah. for for this type of leak. So they will tackle tiny leaks. Um, they now find them with a little sniffer it's called it's okay, some yeah. sort of gas detecting device where if they even get any sort of reading whatsoever they uh, they, they tend to want to hit it straight away yeah and um, they have for aging infrastructure as well you know a lot of this yeah. stuff is quite old yeah. so um you know that that helps <laughs> <laughs> good okay so um so why do why do your clients like using technology such as bell zoners uh, what are the the advantages in terms of i don't know uh, application yeah. procedure or you know, i think that it one of the main um one of the main benefits that we can offer is that it's it's a quick turnaround the alternative to what we do is replacing yeah. you know whatever's caused this uh, yeah. you know what that could mean dismantling a piece of equipment and replacing gaskets or whatever yeah. and that takes time yeah. uh, and it's extremely expensive and um, you know we can do we can repair a leak reliably in the long term for an absolute fraction of the cost okay. of doing that now it's not the same thing yeah. but it, uh, it you know if they have a problem that needs to be dealt with quickly we can deal with it quickly and you know, that makes it go away from their point of view. And it does go away. You know, we don't get a lot of problems with callbacks on these very yeah. rarely, very rarely, which is great. And um, so the repair is reliable. Um, uh, you know, they know that they can ring us and that we'll react. Um, they know how we work. We understand yeah. their procedures and, you know, the materials are, are they're familiar with the materials. They're all yeah. approved through you know, the usual sort of corporate head office route and, and so on and so forth. So I think it's kind of a comfortable fit for the customer mm. when, you know, one of these problems comes up, they know they can make a phone call and, you know, nine times out of 10, it'll be solved. Um, I think that's that's a good place for them to yeah. be. And is this uh, repair versus replace more of a trend that you're seeing? I think so. Down. Yeah, I, I, it depends, really. I think when 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 they start talking about replacing, they're into, you know, capital expenditure, they're into big projects, yeah. you know, they're into spending, you know, large sums of money, whereas, you know, we could probably do a small repair for, you know, a, a couple of hundred euro. And yeah. um, so it's 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 they don't get me wrong that they, they do replace stuff, you yeah. know, and it, but it's usually part of a major investment where they take, you know, a whole spend a few million euro and replace you know one set of equipment with a newer set and um, but that, that takes them years to plan that and to, to implement it and all the rest in the meantime they got to deal with all the stuff that's leaking yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you get more stuff and yeah okay. yeah so i suppose by uh you know simply by kind of offering the services that you do you're offering uh, another option to yes. you know what they probably saw 10 15 years ago yeah, being a very costly replacement yeah. of equipment. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on uh on, on kind of 
how does this repair look kind of going forward in the future? Is SF6 going anywhere in, in your opinion? Or I don't think so. Um, I I don't really know. I know that the with you know increased reliance on renewables that there's going to be huge investments required in the network. It's going to have to be upgraded substantially over the next 20 years. Um, yeah. We're all going to be driving electric cars in the next uh, <laughs> in, in the next 10 years. And, yeah. th- you know, the network wasn't built for that. Um, so there's a massive amount of money going to be spent on it. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not an expert in, in you know, insulating gases. But I, I don't know if there are any alternatives to SF6. I'm sure if there were, we'd probably know about it, but I, I don't think so. Great. I mean, it's it's very well established technology what they do with with yeah yeah yeah. That, that I mean that's certainly the message that we're we're kind of getting here. Um, yeah. And I think just talking from to to, to my colleague Adam and uh, and a couple of other guys, um, it it's still you know uh, as polluting as it is, it's still the cheapest and actually most efficient way of. Yeah. you know, uh, inhibiting this this arc between between equipment. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah, and it's only polluting if it leaks, you know, and they they deal with that. Yeah, you know, it's not ignored the way it was twenty years ago. Yeah, and if it leaks now, there there are more options to to yeah. kind of deal with that as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, is there any particular application that comes to mind that kind of stands out in your head, or? or... Um. Well, I don't think there's any particular one. I mean, um, you know, that they're, they're they're ongoing. Um, we're not doing them every day, but they come up regularly. Yeah. Um, I suppose just on on the application techniques. Just going back to a question yeah, you yeah. asked me earlier, we found that the reliability of the repair is much much higher if you grip last. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's we found that to be very important. And um, there were times when we didn't and it wasn't as reliable as we would have liked it to have been. Um, again, that takes more resources and, and you know, it's a little bit more cost involved. But it's it's for us, we, we think it's essential and, and the customers know that sometimes it's not possible. And um, but, you know, wherever we can, which is most of the time. We'll grip blast. We wrap the porcelains in in a sort of a rubber, a sticky rubber backed material uh, mm-hmm. to protect them, and um, from the, from the grit, and away we go. If uh, if you like the example there, you say grip, grip blasting isn't possible. Yeah. Would you then look at a, a surface tolerant product? To, yeah, to do that. We would do. Yeah, we'd use um, eleven sixty one or even twelve twelve, depending on how big it was. I mean, sometimes you get a very small repair. We had one, for example, it was a porous casting, believe it or not, which is okay. very unusual. Um, major cost for replacement and a big downtime. I'm talking 20 odd thousand for replacement wow, okay. um, and a number of weeks and lead time, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. We put a plate on it uh, using twelve twelve in minutes, uh, prepped it with an MBX and put a plate on it. Uh, we couldn't blast in that situation because it yeah. was actually it was an indoor job and it was so small and um, we couldn't get a compressor anywhere near it. It was in Dublin city centre, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Anyway, we MBXed the surface, MBXed a plate and bonded the plate over the area with 1212, uh, 100% successful. Simple, uh, f- uh, you know, one unit of 1212 yeah. and an hour or two for a guy to do it. And yeah. that was it. Yeah. So 1212 being our, uh, our fast curing surface tolerant yeah. uh, paste grade solution there. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Great. Okay. Um, I, I, to be honest, I think that's covered kind of all the all the questions okay. that, that we had. Uh, is there anything else that you want to mention or you feel like uh, uh, I should ask? Or I, I suppose um, my advice would be don't try and do this while there's pressure inside. Okay. The the switch gear. What if if that tends to be very very difficult and hit and miss as to whether that works or not. So our customer, they have a gas cart, they evacuate the chamber, uh, bring it to a slight vacuum, and then we do the repair, and then they put the gas back in. You know, x number of hours later, depending on temperature and whatnot. So that 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 would be really important. Fantastic. Okay. So great. Overall, though, uh, it sounds like your client is is uh, is happy with with using uh, the, these types of technology to for, for leak sealing and it certainly offers them another option um than than simply replacing the equipment absolutely yeah. 
Fantastic. Okay. All right, Philip, thanks a lot for your, your time. Thanks for agreeing to be on the, uh, the Buzzone podcast. And uh, yeah, I hope to get you back on at some point in the future. All right, thank you. Thank you. That about wraps us up for today's episode. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the content. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, or follow. You can find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, or you know your local podcast provider. Uh, I don't know if local is the word there, but we'll go with it. Uh, for more information on anything that we've discussed on today's episode, uh, please go to www.belzona.com. Uh, as we mentioned at the start as well, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, or suggestions for future episodes, please get in touch with us on our new email address, podcast at belzona.com. Uh, and other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for today's guests. Uh, so Philip Bryan of Belltech and, uh, and Adam Wood um, for their contributions. And thank you guys for listening. Uh, we look forward to uh, having you back for the next episode. Thank you.